another big chunk of interest for BCOS is around issues around cost of living and utilities. We were just talking then about mm -hmm. uh, pressures on yes. families in terms of bills. Um, and also for us it opens up questions around policies around climate change yes. and how to ensure social equity mm -hmm. yep. around climate change. Um, so given that <coughs> the rising cost of utilities has had a lot of coverage, mm -hmm. um, will the Greens support the, the ALP's new summer electricity concession? and commit to completing the concessions review that's just begun, which will recommend changes to electricity concessions, which would ideally mediate the impact of new tariffs made possible by smart meters. Mm. Um, absolutely, and interestingly, the Greens in the last weeks of Parliament put forward a motion in the upper house that was rejected, um, that we needed to have a parliamentary um, committee look at the issue of concessions because it, it is a major issue, mm. and I was approached by uh, Bego for Pensioners yes. and COTA, and who had put together an excellent package of why it was necessary, especially the summer concessions, and that's quite logical when you look at heatwave deaths um, just before Black Saturday. Mm. We have to be able to protect all the people, and they're not going to run their air conditioners because they can't afford them. Mm. So we would absolutely support but as long as it was done quickly, and then we actually got on to giving people concessions rather than just having the review. And are there other, do you think there are other Greens policies that, that go directly to um, the issues that arise when you, um, when you take a conservation mm -hmm. approach towards yes. pricing yes. signals? Yes, yes. Um, and where that then creates a burden on the lowest income families. Um, what are the other sorts of things that, that the Greens would uh, advocate for and support in order to protect those yes. low income households? Yes. Especially people renting, um, that's a really important sector yeah. and that would be around you know, the ability to retrofit a house, your solar panels, but also the government has to come to terms with feeding tariffs that you know people should actually not be paying for their, um, the, you know, the fact that they've put their solar panels up but they should be able to sell back into the grid, and it's just not working um, at the moment. So it'd be those kinds of things that we need to do. And obviously the other thing is though that when new houses are built, they should be built in such a way that they're actually environmentally sustainable, so that we stop building boxes with no um, eaves and no verandas, and we stop putting in you know, multiple globes into every house. And so there are some really basic things that can be done to help that. But I think we do really need to concentrate on people who are renting and all the people who are going to really struggle with um, higher costs. Mm. Okay. Um, now moving on to a, a next one, planning mm. and development issues. Oh, the joy of the Greens' lives. Um, so we've got lots of big challenges mm. facing us as a community. Urban sprawl, yes. population growth, sustainability, mm. and, and an ageing population. Yes to the extent that's a challenge mm. and opportunity. How would you balance the challenges of ensuring a sustainable city with affordable housing, access to jobs, access to health, education, community services, services well-connected affordable public transport, all of those good things, how do you balance that with the many competing and conflicting interests around planning and development and a lack of bipartisan support for, our, for a metro-wide planning framework? Um, the Greens voted against the urban growth boundaries for all the reasons that you've just outlined. Let's look at how it's been done in other places, in Canada, in Sweden, in other European countries, where they do this much better than we do. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, we need to look at how it's been done elsewhere. We are going to have to come to terms with some medium and higher density in the city, and that's probably more logically placed around CBDs of suburbs, we're going to need to make sure that new suburbs are not built without a transport plan. Um, you know, Caroline Springs is about to get a railway, railway station, except it's on a V line um, line. And so, yeah, they'll have a station, but not actually a service. So that doesn't make sense. So you've got to have that creative planning all the way through and a metro-wide planning program would be the way to go and I don't understand why the other parties won't do that. Partly I think they're captive 
of the developers and all of these things cost more money. But in the long term we have to do it or else it's going to cost us more in the future. So what role do you see for the Greens in helping to facilitate solutions to what is currently a highly conflictual and politicised set of issues? Around planning, in planning particular. and the role of local government, yes. state government. Yes, it's, um, I, I think the most complaints that any councillor or member of the parliament gets is around planning issues. And so we have on the one hand, at the moment, a number of, um, you know, medium and high density projects that are being put forth with very little consultation with the community. Um, how do you balance the need for building that accommodation with you know, the community having some planning rights or the local council. Um, we need to have a process that's clear and my experience being on local governments, there's nothing about planning that's clear and there's nothing about planning that makes you have the ability to approve something quickly while including the community. So I think we have to redo the whole and figure out a new way of doing this that includes councils and includes communities but make sure that accommodation is built well and at a reasonable pace. Okay. Um, now going into some things I suppose that are more that we're talking to the Greens about yes. because, uh, because it's unlikely that we're going to have a Green Premier. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I'm prepared to concede that. Okay. Um, this so, time. Yeah, this time. Um, so it's really questions around how the Greens yes. can can use yes. use the, their place mm. in Parliament. Yeah. Um, so the first one, I suppose, is around legislative yes. reform. And mm -hmm. you've been well able to talk about this, Colin. Um, but can you speak a bit on how Green members of Parliament can make a difference where they're not there in enough numbers to control the decisions on mm -hmm. the floor of Parliament? Mm -hmm. Certainly in the upper house, mm -hmm. depending on the day we 